to license it. Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew, and on the bench today is a 1 to 64 scale Kinsmark Volkswagen Classical Bus. It also gets called a camper van or a combi, depending on where you're watching from. I'm going to do something a bit different for me, at least on this project, so stay tuned as I continue to experiment with techniques and never forget it's a hobby. These are toys and I'm having fun and I hope you will too as you watch this video. Coming up in mid-August I am participating in my very first build-off with a couple of online friends and we're all doing a Hot Wheels 1975 Corvette Stingray. It's going to be a good time. Well the Kinsmark goes into the bench vise and this uh, front rivet doesn't actually hold it together. It's kind of more of a fastener for the little front bumper. And it's the first Kinsmark that I've worked on. This might be a model name that's new for you. I've got a couple of them in my box of project cars, but I can tell you right away this is well made and uh, of course the video was edited down for time, but this was a uh, four or five minutes trying to crack this one open. It is well made and it's quite well detailed. And I told you I'm going to do something a little bit different and you're wondering what happened to the paint stripping? Andrew, well no paint stripping gel is involved in this project. I'm going to start by doing a little bit of masking here and I'll let your imagination go free for the next moment or two. The Kinsmart website says this, Kintoy, the company, was founded in 1992 with the aim to create die-cast toy cars for children and, as importantly, the child within us adults. I like that. Most of us involved in this hobby are just big kids that have never outgrown the hobby and we're still having fun. We're going to go into the paint booth and because I'm right-handed you see the back left corner of my DIY spray booth gets a lot of overspray so I brush that down every now and then and this is just air coming out of the airbrush to blow away any loose particles so that doesn't fly around when I'm trying to do a fresh paint job. So can you get a vision of where you think I might be going with this? I've taped off that front driver's door. It gets a gray spray. And I taped up the lift hatch on the very back. I'm going to give that a shot of orange. Which is a little too orange. So I added a couple drops of brown in there just to darken it up a little bit. So no real big mystery what's going on here. As the tape comes off you're going to see revealed two primer doors as replacements. Driver's side front door in gray and the back lift hatch in brownish orange. So it looks like a vehicle that's got some work being done to it and has a couple miles on it. I want to give a shout out while the paint dries to my friend Jeff from Diecast Powder Coating. This is a channel that I hope you will visit and subscribe to and when you do you are going to see not only excellent restorations but media blasting and powder coating. And I'll leave a link in the description so you go and check that out and uh, you won't be sorry that you did. 
So here's the plan. It's going to be a weathering project today, and I got some supplies. I went to the dollar store. It got my kindergarten water paints and some black wash, Tamiya weathering powders, and don't ask. I went in uh, with a corona mask on and a hat and sunglasses into the the beauty area and picked up some eye shadow application brushes. That's our secret. And the black wash is very forgiving. If you've used this before, you really can't make a mistake or even have a happy little accident. It applies very watery and then you actually wipe it off and it's going to just highlight the casting lines, like the door panels and the window frames. and So if you do make a mistake, you just clean it off and start again. But you really can't go wrong here. And today you're not going to be able to say it has to look like that or it can't look like that. I'm going for an old look, not just rust, but weather. So while I do this, imagine the camper van sitting outside in all the elements and the rain and getting splashed and muddy and I'm just going to have some fun with this. Now I know that some of you have owned a VW camper van and if you have I want you to weigh in with a comment. Tell us the year, what was the color combination, what was your destination, did you drive it up the Pacific Coast Highway to Yosemite National Park or did you traverse across the UK right up to the Orkney Islands? Tell us about your experience and I'd, I'd love to know what you do. I've never been in one of these. I've done lots of camping but not in a combi van. So that'll be fun to hear a couple of stories in the comments and always remember give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner and uh, the notification bell and tell us where you're from and where you traveled in your VW camper. Now I've switched to some of the colors here and we're going for a little bit of a rust effect. I'm just looking for areas where it would naturally happen and then creating a couple of drips down there. So you'll see the brown and the orange and the yellow, those are the ones that I'll focus on today. Kind of a makeover in reverse, I guess is what's happening here. I have seen the weathering techniques done on different YouTube channels. Sometimes you uh, do it with rock salt and spray over top of that and then knock the salt off and you get a very realistic looking rust speckle effect. I'm going to do that in the future at some point. I'm just experimenting. Here's just watercolors. I've seen it done this way before. And I thought the VW camper lent itself well to this. They've been around for so long and Every now and then you see one abandoned, but where I live in Switzerland, you see them on the road all the time. Some of them are really smartly restored and refurbished in, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of miles or kilometers they'd have on them, but it's been a popular one. Maybe one of the best sellers after the Beetle. Now that we needed a little flower power on this to make it a real 60s hippie van. But I'm not going to overdo it. So I found a couple of decals online and I make my own with uh, some water slide decal paper. And these ones actually look pre-weathered. So we'll just put a little peace sign on the side here. Straighten that out with a toothpick and I'll uh, 
put some deco set on top of that. Kind of melts it right into the casting lines. And I got a different deco for the other side. Also a peace sign. I rest these on top of a sponge for the 20 or 30 seconds it's required to separate the decal from the backing paper and that just makes it a little easier to pick up than going fishing for it in the bottom of a water dish. And I moisten the side of the vehicle. That'll help give me a little bit of play if I need to wiggle this around a little bit. Let's put it there. So it's not symmetrical with the other side, but the, I'm not going for symmetry. Going for love and peace. <laughs> Remember the summer of love in 1967, Hate Ashbury. If you're going to San Francisco, be sure to put some flowers in your hair. I even muddied up the windshield with a little bit of paint and some black wash went on the interior, a little bit of mud on the wheels. And I think I've achieved the effect that I was after here. It just, it's just not a totally derelict van, but it it's never seen a garage in its life, let's put it that way. It's been outside. And if you were at Woodstock, I wasn't, or you've seen a documentary, that was just a couple of muddy days. So that looks like the, the combi van made a trip over there. Here's a close-up. Primer door, some rust speckles, looks like the rain just hit that dirty top and settled in a pool. Messed up the tires and the chrome a little. There's one missing headlight and one is hanging out. <laughs> Why not? Oh, the stories this one could tell. Where it has been and what it has seen. Well, it was a fun project today. And I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I had fun putting it together. As I said, I'll try other techniques in the future, but this is the reverse makeover. It looked pretty good when I started. Nothing wrong with that model. <laughs> Here it is, finished. Oh yeah. Has been to a couple of rock concerts. And it's going into the gift bag. I hope the little guy who gets this isn't disappointed <laughs> that it's not a, a brand new looking shiny Ferrari, but that was my attempt at a, a weathering today, and I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Why not? Come on back real soon, won't you? It's coffee time.